Hello everyone, my name is Michael Mazurets. First of all, I would like to thank you for Sam Omar and all of the members of the Minic Team for your invitation for this amazing event. Today, I would like to share with you my presentation about digital planning in everyday practice. I would like to show you cases that are not only about dental implants, they are about all kinds of dentistry. I'm from beautiful city called Wrocław in Southwest Poland. I hope that after the COVID, we can meet there, we can have fun, we can share experience there. So, as I said, digital planning is present in all of the field of dentistry, starting with implantology, prostodontist, orthodontist, periodontology, restorative dentistry, complex treatment and diagnosis. But let's start from the beginning. We need digital data to start digital planning. And the first step is how to collect data. So digital data acquisition. And digital data acquisition is combined with many things. We can start with the face scans, with photo and video documentation of our patient, for example, for the DSD, CBCT, Combin CT for our daily implant placement, for our re endo treatment dynamic virtual articulation, that we can plan our temporary restoration according to the pre-surgery situation. Model scans, if we don't have intraolar scanners. Intraolar scanners, when we like to very fast and predictable, collect STL5 from the patient mouth. Next step, after we collect our data, is the planning and processing of this data which we can use in further steps. So when we collect the data, we will start with data merging. So combining DICOM5 with STL5, for example, for the implant treatment, for the orthodontic treatment, use a CAD software to plan our temporary or the final restoration, make a simulation, for example, orthodontic treatment, prostodontic treatment, wax up and afterwards mock-ups in our patient mouth or of course implant planning and the last steps with digital data is fabrication and execution of it so in these steps we will use milling for example milling pmma crowns and bridges for our restoration we can use the grinding machines to grind emax crown for example 3d printing starting from the small printers, chair side one for the models, finish with the bigger one, for example, for the guides for temporary restoration. Selective laser centering, so printing in the chromo cobalt or titanium, make from it the supra structure for our implants for the restoration based on teeth. Stelographic printing, so preparing very, very good quality of guides for our surgery. These all things will be collected with the tools which we have. So for example, combing machines, I hope that everyone use it, especially for the dental implant planning. Intraola scanners, I love it, I use it every day. I'm not making any more impressions. Ostel, every implant should be followed by use of the ostos to check the primary stability and to check the stability of the implant before making the prosthetic part. Milling machines. So that is the tool which our dental technicians use in every day to create bridges, crowns from PMA, zirconia, all of the metal kinds. And of course, 3D printers that will be used to make models, to make the, our temporary restoration or to make our guides. But in everyday practice, we'll use mainly two things. First of all, CBCT machines to collect our DICOM file and STL file to, from our intraolar scanners or from our models. And for example, orthodontic treatments, nowadays very popular thing, clear aligners. Nowadays, due to the digital possibilities, we can make it on our own the clear aligners in digital way. So we can scan the patient, we can plan the treatment, we can execute it to create the clear aligners. Next thing, in orthodontics, individual hierarchs, great thing, make our life easier, 
treatment faster, it's more comfortable for the patient, and the quality for it, it's amazing. We can laser sinter it, or we can the same make the laser sintering for our substructure based on the implants. Another thing, doing the virtual axa for the prosthetic uh, patients. Another thing, doing the virtual wax ups for our patient. In the few clicks and in a few minutes, we can create the digital wax up and we can print, for example, the model or use it for the further planning. Simple thing, like inlays only. We can make them fully digital without use of any models. We don't have to print models to check it. For the single units, amazing thing, full, cont full contour zirconia, we can make it without a model. r 2 gate that is what I use in my daily practice. I'm focused on my clinic, on the implantology, on digital planning. Each of my patients have a guide. We perform only guided surgery in our clinic. We'd like to do it because we have much better outcome. We can provide better treatment and we plan everything from the beginning. I would like to share with you some of the cases and I would like to show you how digital tools help us with the planning and with the outcome of our patients. So, first of all, we start with, as I said, with the intralar scanners, we scan the patients. I've, after that, we take the CBCT and we start the planning. In this case, patient has a bridge for more than 15 years based on the canine. She was missing lateral and the central incisors in upper jaw. So, we start with the wax up and after that, we start to make our virtual planning for our implants. Due to the virtual wax up, we can choose the best prosthetic position and we can find a place where we have the most of the bone and we will get very good primary stability. After the planning, we can create the digital model with the scan bodies. And it looks exactly the same like a dental technician will do it in the analog way. So, peer out the models scan it with the scan bodies. So, with the use of our wax up and with the scan bodies, he can create the temporary restoration. And what I want to point here, very important thing, it should be thick. The PMMA should be thick, that we are on the safe side, that during the healing period, we will not have any technical problems with our restoration. Starting from the surgery, we remove the bridge. We extract the canines and I create the flap. So we extract the canines. After extraction, I check always the fitment of the guide. And after that, I create the flap that I will place my implants. So all of the implants were placed according the position of the depth of the implants. In case of more than one implants, I'm not using any hex abutment, so my hex position in this case is not important for me. We place the four implants. I check, of course, the primary stability of it, and with the enriched implant, I got amazing results. 75, 79, 75, and 75. So I'm sure I can load this implant and I will not have any issue. In this case, Due to the R2 gate, we can choose the abutments, which we will use as a temporary abutments. So in the position of the canines, we use the temporary abutment, the standard one, with our, which are 10 millimeters height. In the position of the central incisors, we use the Z-Urgens. After intraola cementing of this work, we suture the patient, we do all of the grafting, and after that, we place the, the temporary restoration, which are screw retained in this case. I would like to show you another case. This patient we refer to our clinic, he broke his zirconia bridge with the metal posts. He looks like that when he came to our office and he asked for help because there was no way to restore it. He told us that he lost one implant. It was in the position of the right central incisor and there is this huge bone and soft tissue defect and he doesn't want to have any big surgery, minimal invasive surgery. So, in this case, 
we start from the base. So we start with the digital wax up. With based on digital wax up, we can make a great planning due to the later prosthetics. So we choose two implants long to get the good primary step. It's the 13 millimeter implants. After that, the same procedure, I create the STL file with digital scan bodies, which I sent to my dental technician. Based on it, he start to do the planning of the temporary restoration based on the wax up. So the same situation, it's very thick to provide the success for us. So we will not have the breakage of this temporary restoration in next six to nine months sometimes. So we start our treatment with the extraction, minimal advising using the periotome to don't have any breakage of the buccal bone, which is very important and very crucial in this kind of treatment. We clean the sockets and we use the new style of the R2Gate guides with the cooling window. So now we can be sure that we will not overheat the bone. This is a great design which came with the last upgrade. In this case, we place two implants, the same like the previous case. I'm not focusing on the hex because I'm using not hex abutment in these cases. So only the depth is important for us. We place the implants. We check, of course, the primary stability. In this case, it was above 70, both of the implant. We use temporary abutment there, long one, 10 millimeter heights. We check everything. We intra our cement the bridge. We done the post-processing with it and we screw it back. Of course, the patients know that there will be some pink porcelain in the future, but the case went very smooth due to the planning that we can know everything before the surgery. Another case, there are the big cases, the full mouth reconstruction. Lots of people say digital planning guides that is for the full arch cases. That's true. This is very important in this case. But we can make lots of things, especially in the full R cases. This lady came to our office, super nice lady, smiling, making lots of jokes, but she has a problem with her smile. As we see here in the intra scanning, she has a big bridges. And when we performed CBCT, we saw something very strange, lots of resections and big, big bone defects, lack of the buccal bone in lots of places, very difficult conditions. But we use of our digital tools, we can make a planning before and we can check lots of position of the implant. Like one of my mentor, Professor German Galucci from the Harvard University told me, look, with digital tools, you can perform surgery without patient. You can make it many, many times. You can check the best position for the implant placement. So you can improve your implant strategy. You can get a better result. So in this case, we decided to place six implants. And I was looking very long for good implant position to get good result and to make it possible that the patient will walk out with our, uh, from our office with the temporary reach. But we start sometimes to think outside of the box. So in this case, we can see that the patient has two separate bridges. So I thought, why not to use one bridge to place some implants and after that perform the uh, rest of the surgery. In this case, I start with the planning with extraction with one of the bridge and I plan based on virtual wax up free implants. After that, I extract the second bridge and I place another free implant virtually based on the wax up. And here it's come something what I hope that lots of people start to performing after these lectures. We can make our life easier. We can think outside of the box. So the I create two guides. One guide, first one, was based on the TIFFs and with it, I place three implants. After that, I extract rest of the TIFF 
based second guide based on the three implants that I place and on two pins. So I use pay the implants which I placed before to fix my guide. And it's very, very good solution, especially in this kind of cases when we don't have a dentulous patient, but we will perform the full arch cases. So as I said, first step, extraction of the one of the bridge, removing and cleaning the socket, placing with the guide three implants, like here. We perform osteodensification in the last one to get better primary stability. After that, I extract the rest of the teeth. After that, so we, we place three implants, the last implants on the left side, I use osteodensification to gain the primary stability. After that, I perform the extraction of the rest of the teeth and remove the second bridge. I graft all of the sockets, make some sutures, and then I place the second guide based on my implants and based on the pins. I place another three implants, and of course, I check the primary stability, which was spectacular. 78, 77, 75, 89, 85, 74. So we get a very good results. After that, we decide to place anatomic healing abutment on the last implant on the right side. And we decide to load all of the five implants. We start with the intralar cementing of our temporary bridge and we post-process it extraorally. So I fill all of the gaps with the flowable composite to create very good emergence profile and to provide very good healing. After that, I screw it back. But there is a very important thing. We need to use that 25 neutral centimeters to provide that the, our temporary restoration will not unscrew. All of the failure, technical failure, can lead to the failure of our implants. So we have to be very sure that we screw all of the implants, all of the temporary restorations according to the manufacturing settings. After the surgery, and that's how the patient looks. And I want to show you there something. We perform the temporary restoration based on her teeth. And here we can see exactly that there is, that is a virtual copy of our patient teeth. That's why we can be sure that the occlusion will be stable, that there will be not any problem with the temporal mandibular joint. We can do it with digital solution. I hope that you enjoy the lecture. The whole message from me to you is digital instruments will improve your and your patient's life. So thank you for your kind attention. I hope that you really enjoy it.